Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to get started with infrastructure monitoring. So basically, if you have been following my tutorial and uh, setting up services and servers, at this point, you have several virtual machines running in your uh, local machine. In a production environment, there will be several servers and services running that we need to make sure that they keep running. For example, if we go back and take a look at our uh, video number 17, here we have a small infrastructure with several servers running. Uh, there is Jenkins, Git, uh, then Node.js, Nginx, WordPress, MySQL, a lot of servers are running. And uh, at any point in time, we need to make sure that none of them are down. Like, you know, uh, MySQL is not crashed, the servers are not overloaded, everything has enough disk space, memory, etc. So we need a way to make sure that all the services that matters to us are healthy. And if something goes wrong with them, it should notify us. And that is what monitoring is all about. It's about keeping an eye on whatever is happening on our servers and the services running on them. We need to know whenever the application is unhealthy or if it's performing poorly. Okay, so what do we monitor? So ask these questions to ourselves. What matters to us? First of all, we need the server to be up uh, and we need the applications to be running on the servers. And then we need to have enough resources on the server for the application to run optimally. So we could obviously monitor the system resources like CPU, RAM, uh, disk space, etc. Then we need to monitor the application health itself. Like if the application is running and uh, if it's actually responding correctly, etc. Then we need to check the performance of the application. More often than not, the application could be running and if it could be responding properly, but it could be very slow. It could happen if uh, there is a lot of requests coming in or if the servers are overloaded. In any case, we need to know if the application is performing poorly. So back to the system resources. What are the system resources out there that we can monitor? First of all, the most obvious one would be the CPU. The load average on the system could give us a, an indicator of how well the system is performing. If we talk about commands, we could make use of the commands like uptime, top, edge top, etc. to see this, you know, you know, the level at which our CPU is loaded. Let me show it to you for an example. For example, the command uptime will show the, well, actual uptime and then the load average of the server. So what is load average? It's an indication of how loaded the server is over one minute, five minutes and 15 minutes of the time last one minute, last five minutes and last 15 minutes. This number means the number of processes running and the number of processes waiting to be executed on this system. So how to know if a server is loaded, overloaded or not? So in a system with one CPU, if the load average is one, that means there is exactly one, C, uh, one process running in that server and that CPU is fully utilized. So which is good. So if that system has two CPU cores, we would need it to have more than two, uh, you know, two load average to be able to say that it is overloaded. Basically a rule of thumb is that if the load average is greater than the number of CPU cores in that system, we could say that the system is overloaded. Another command that you can use to see the top running processes is top itself. I'm not going to explain what exactly each of these fields mean right now. You should research that on your own. There is another cleaner looking software that will let us show the top processes running in the system, which is HTOP. Here you can see the average CPU utilization, memory usage and uh, swap usage, etc. You could make use of all of these tools to actually see the load average on the system. The next resource would be obviously memory. We can use the free command to see the uh, memory usage on the system. So to make it more human readable, we can use free dash H. This one also, I'm not going to explain the output. You should research about what each of these column means. It is extremely important you understand the concept of what exactly these numbers mean. And the next system resource would be the disk usage, which can be seen using the command df. The command df shows the disk usage. We can see the values in a more human readable format using df-h. Here as you can see, the root partition is 79% used and uh, you know, there's only 46 gigabytes available. And then another metric would be disk IO or the amount of input output operations happening on that disk. You can use the commands like IO stat and IO top to see the disk utilization. 
So if I do sudo iotop, you can see the top processors running the most disk intensive operations. For example, if I run a command to write a big file, so this is keep this keeps writing to that file. And here you can see that the yes command is being used 275 megabytes per second. Another command is iostat. Again, read more about it, understand each and every field that it has to show. In our case, I'm just going to explain a single metric that is the percentage IO wait. It means the amount of time, percentage of time this system was waiting for input output operations to complete. So if this value is very high, that means there is something wrong with your application writing too much or reading too much from the disk or the disk, it, uh, the disk itself could be performing really poorly. Uh, I'm not going to explain more about each of these and make things more complicated for you. Read about what each of these commands does and uh, what their output means. It's an exercise for you. Alright, so the next one would be the application health. So obviously we need to know if the process is running or not. And then we need to know if that application itself is responding correctly. Uh, as I mentioned before, sometimes it's possible that even if it's running, it may not be responding properly. It could be stuck or uh, completely unresponsive. And then the application performance. So one of the major metric that everybody out there uses to measure the performance of an application is called app response time. Basically app response time means the response time, the amount of time the application took to serve a request. And it shows us how fast our service is. Obviously, it varies based on the application, the, the amount of resources available on the servers, etc. But if we are managing an application, we would know the average value the, that application has. Let's say 100 millisecond. So if the response time of that application goes above 100, 100 millisecond to let's say 500 millisecond, then we know that there is something really wrong with the application. It could be with the application or it could be with any of the parts of the infrastructure that is relating to that application. And another metric would be error rate. That is how many 500s and uh, 400s are returning by the application. We have talked about few of the key metrics that we need to be monitoring if we want to actually know the state of our system. And in the next video, we will actually talk about setting up monitoring using a tool called Sensu. So alright, that's pretty much for it in this video. See you in the next one.